Hello there, welcome to the Grimaldi Forum. I'm Reshmin, this is Pedro, and we are absolutely delighted to be back in Monaco for the UEFA Champions League group stage draw and award ceremony. We are indeed, we're here on the red carpet where some of the biggest stars in European football have been greeted by their fans as they make their way <laughs> into the arena. Yeah, absolutely. Look, this is the hottest ticket in town. Yep. So many big faces from the world of football, but what everyone wants to really know is who is playing who? in the group stages next season. They do. They'll also want to find out who will be crowned the UEFA Women's and Men's Player of the Year. Absolutely. So we will kick off our show in just a moment. Before we do, though, please welcome a couple of musicians who have composed something that is uh, inspired by that world-famous UEFA Champions League anthem. Here they are, Bruce Liu and Asia Fateeva. <laughs> First, yeah. Oh, I was first, yeah. What a great original piece inspired by the UEFA Champions League anthem. And Reshman, this is an iconic tune. I mean, everybody knows it, everybody loves it the fans, the players. And all of us as well. I mean, it's like a dream for players to play in the competition. It's a dream for us to work in the competition. And you hear the song and you just get goosebumps, yeah. don't you? Especially at the stadiums. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here at the Grimaldi Forum in Monaco. Great to see it packed for another massive occasion, which is the UEFA Champions League group stage draw and award ceremony. It is indeed. We cannot wait to kick off a brand new season of UEFA Champions League football, the best club competition, bar none 
on the planet. And we are delighted to be joined by representatives from the 32 clubs who have qualified for this year's group stage. There are some familiar faces, some returning faces, and also some UCL debutants as well. So a huge welcome to all of you. Definitely. Also a special welcome to all the football icons, past and present, we have here. And of course, to all the millions of football fans watching their screens around the world. Absolutely. Well, last season's UEFA Champions League uh, was another historic one. Manchester City won the title uh, for the very first time, becoming the 23rd different club to lift this famous trophy since the competition began. Definitely, and let's take a look back at that captivating campaign which culminated in a dramatic final between the citizens and the Nerazzurri at the Atatürk Olympic Stadium in Istanbul. Sensational sights and sounds. Yeah, worth a clap. What a season. 
What a final. Uh, I'm here in the audience, uh, delighted to be joined by Manchester City's director of football, Chiki Begiri Stein. So many emotions on the faces of the players, of the coaching staff. Take us back to that night. What did it mean for you after so many years of fighting for this trophy and to the club? It was just uh, amazing not to see how the players they enjoyed that day. They struggle, of course. It was difficult to, to, to get there. We have been for, for many years. Uh, but it looks like it's a project consolidation. No? We have uh, we had two semi-finals. We had the final at Porto. We were getting there, but finally we got it, and and we are so proud and so happy. Well, congratulations. Thank you, you very much to the club, no doubt about that. And good luck for today's UEFA Champions League group stage draw as well. Rashman, you. back to you. Thank you very much, Pedro. Yeah, congratulations to Manchester City. You may remember City's hero from that game was Rodri, who, as well as being named player of the final, was also the UEFA player of the season as well. That was a decision from UEFA's technical panel, who also selected Napoli's Kavara Kavarik Shkelia as the UCL's young player of the season. So huge congratulations to both players on their individual awards. Definitely. Hello. Back. Pedro's back with me, so which means it's time to turn our attention to this season. And the dream of every single club in tonight's draw will be to emulate City's achievements and win the UEFA Champions League. But only two teams can be in the hat to yep. do that. Only two teams can reach the final, which this year will be held in my hometown, London are born and bred. It'll be at Wembley Stadium on the 1st of June, and I cannot wait. <laughs> I, I can't either, and I'm not even from London. <laughs> it's a special stadium, and now it's our pleasure to welcome two special guests who know it very well. And it is our pleasure to welcome two players who had many memorable nights in the UEFA Champions League, Joe Cole and Eric Abidal. Ça va? <laughs> Lovely to see you. Hello. Lovely to see you both. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, fantastic to have you here. Uh, Wembley is the special place where the final will take place this season. A um, couple of questions for you before you help out with the draw as well. Starting with you, Eric. Of course, you won this trophy at Wembley in 2011. Take us back there. What did it mean to play the final, win the final, and to do it at one of the most iconic arenas on the planet? So first of all, good afternoon. Um, yeah, it was uh, great memories for, for us as, uh, as a club, as a team. Uh, of course, very difficult to, to achieve. Uh, but Champions League is always special. Yeah. Uh, this stadium was amazing, the city amazing. I think it's the, the best place to host the, the Champions League final again. Definitely. Yeah, amazing that's, a, final that's well. a good endorsement of Wembley. I mean, Joe, you've played there so many times for club and country, and it is that iconic venue. It's the home of English football. There's a reason why it has the X factor, and you're here to tell yeah. us what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's very romantic, especially for, for English players. You know, I remember I played at the old Wembley as well, and I used to not—I used to live not far from it, and used to sneak in when I didn't have my ticket. So I'm, I'm <laughs> really yes, and um, I'm very, very. Uh, we'll let you off. <laughs> yeah, very excited to welcome the whole of Europe to Wembley. Yeah, absolutely, as we all are. Thank you, guys. Lovely to have you here. Are you ready for the draw? Nerves of steel? You know, this is a big job. It's a big job, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a privilege to be working here with UEFA. And like I said, I just want favourable draws for all the English teams, and, and I'll be happy. <laughs> and all the other teams as well, obviously. Good luck, guys. I will let you take your place at the draw table. Yeah, please do. We're almost ready to start with a draw, but of course, we need a couple of gentlemen who are very experienced in these Absolutely. matters. They'll be leading the technical <laughs> procedures, especially, and that is, of course, UEFA Deputy General Secretary Giorgio Marchetti and Tobias Hedstuck, the UEFA Head of Club Competitions.
Good evening, gentlemen. Great to have you here at the Grimaldi Forum in Monaco, Giorgio. I hand over the floor to you. Thank you very much, Pedro, and good evening to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of UEFA, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this much-anticipated UEFA Champions League group stage draw, which sees us back in Monaco for the first time since 2019 to kick off a new European season. In just a few moments, uh, we will shape the eight groups that the 32 best clubs in Europe will have to battle through, the matchups that will set our hearts racing, and the stories that will be written in the new chapter of this great competition. We will witness, as usual, the clash of titans, the emergence of underdogs, and the beauty of the game in its purest form. Although they have bespoke histories and traditions, stepping onto this stage, all 32 clubs and their players will share the same dream of engraving their name into the Wall of Fame as champions of Europe at the majestic Wembley Stadium on 1st of June 2024. As you know, this is a special season as it will drop the curtain on the glorious era of the current format, which has brought us so many unforgettable moments for 25 years, elevating the competition to the pinnacle of club football. And uh, when we will reopen next year, a new exciting adventure will be waiting to delight and exciting even more football fans worldwide. As usual, a uh, warm, warm welcome to all participating clubs and a special welcome to Union Berlin and Royal Antwerp who are experiencing the UEFA Champions League for the very first time in their history. We wish all clubs and uh, everyone here, of course, tonight uh, the very best of luck this season. We are ready for the draw, but uh, first, let's take a little moment uh, for the technical procedure. The 32 teams have been allocated to four pots in accordance with the following principles. Pot 1 will comprise the UEFA Champions League title holder, Manchester City, and the UEFA Europa League title holder, Sevilla FC, as well as the domestic champions of Spain, Italy, Germany, France, Portugal and Netherlands. The remaining 24 teams have been split into three pots based on their position in the UEFA club coefficient rankings. Clubs from the same country cannot be drawn in the same group. Because the same number of UEFA Champions League matches are played on both Tuesdays and Wednesdays, the groups are divided into two colours, red for groups A to D and blue for groups E to H. The red groups will play on one match night and the blue groups will play on the other. This will apply on all match days. For TV coverage reasons, every two teams from one country are paired in order to be split into the red and blue groups. The teams of pot one will be drawn first. A ball will be drawn at random and opened to display the name. The team drawn is placed in the first available group in alphabetical order from A to H, as indicated by the computer and in accordance with the established principles. For example, if the team drawn has all eight options from A to H available, it will be automatically allocated to group A. If the team drawn has four options available, from E to H for example, it will be automatically allocated to Group E, and so on. This procedure will be repeated until all the teams in Pot 1 have been allocated to the eight groups. For Pot 2, a ball will be drawn at random and open to display the name. The computer will then show which groups are available for this club in accordance with the established principles such as country protection and TV pairings. A draw will then be made to determine which of these available groups the club is assigned to. It must be noted that the number of options available to a team depends not only on the team's own attributes and those of the teams already drawn, but also on the attributes of the other teams still to be drawn. This is due to the computer calculations needed to anticipate all possible scenarios and to prevent any deadlock situation. Once the eight teams from Pot 2 have each been allocated to a group, the same procedure will apply for Pots 3 and 4 to complete all the groups. Once the draw procedure has been completed, a computer draw will determine the final positions of the teams within the eight groups, as the position in the group determines the match schedule. The match calendar will be released on Saturday morning at the latest. 
So now we know how it all works. Let's take a look at the teams in pot one. So this pot features mm -hmm. all the top seeded teams, so as you would expect some real powerhouses of European football like the holders Manchester City, Serie A winners Napoli and UEFA Europa League winners Sevilla who are one of five Spanish teams in today's draw. I can't wait for it to get started, we're all waiting. Giorgio, we're ready, over to you. Yes, nobody can wait Pedro, so there is no time to waste. I will quickly shuffle the balls uh, and then it will not be me but of course the capable hands of uh, our legend Joe Cole will tell us uh, which of these eight clubs will top each of the groups. So, Joe, it's in your hands. So we go with the first team, the first group. Bayern Munich. So we start uh, with uh, Bayern Munich. And of course, by the first team drawn, we will allocate in alphabetical order the teams from pot one. So they go into pot, into group A. So one team is allocated, Bayern. Yes, Joe, please. The six time winners and uh, unbeaten in a record strip of 34 group stage matches. So let's see if someone will manage to beat them in this group stage. Sevilla. And we continue with Sevilla, the winners of the UEFA Europa League last year. The Sevilla can go into Group uh, B, the second group. Yes, the uh, best result of uh, Sevilla was uh, in uh, 2058 and 2018, where they reached the quarterfinals. Now it's the fourth successive season where we can see Sevilla. But the next club is ready. Napoli. And the next club is Napoli. They go to Group C, the uh, champions of Serie A, winners of uh, the tournament after a fantastic run last year, not only in Serie A, but also the Champions League, they did very well. Uh, excellent performance up to the quarterfinals and uh, scoring the top number of goals in group stage, 20 goals. Benfica. Now the uh, Portuguese champions, Benfica, Group D can, of course, uh, accommodate uh, Benfica. We're ready to see the next one. They won two titles in their history, 61 and 62. And they participated 43 times in this competition. They are only second. Feyenoord. Feyenoord. So the Dutch champions this time. Group E is the group of, uh, of Feyenoord. Uh, winners also of one title in, back in 1970. Actually, the first Dutch club having won this trophy. Paris Saint Germain. And uh, we have now Paris Saint Germain, champions of France, uh, Group F uh, for uh, the finalists of uh, 2020. 12 successive season in uh, the UEFA Champions League group stage, uh, where they scored uh, at least one goal in the last 44 matches in group stage. Manchester City. And, and here they are, the title holders of Manchester City. Group G is the group of City. Title holders, uh, unbeaten last season with the top scorer of the tournament, uh, Erling Haaland. So let's see who will challenge, we will see later who will challenge Manchester City now. But first we have to complete the last group. 
Barcelona. And we go with the FC Barcelona, Group H for Barcelona, which means that that's all for Pot 1. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you, gentlemen. We now have our first teams in their group, so let's take a look at the club's Pot 2. Looks so good, doesn't it, already? And they haven't even been drawn yet. Eight more teams set to discover their fate, including record Champions League winners at Real Madrid, last year's finalists, Inter, and Premier League side Arsenal, who returned to the competition after a six-year absence. So let's find out who they'll be facing. Back to you, gentlemen. Thank you, Rajmin. So now the responsibility becomes very obvious. Joe, you'll start uh, putting <laughs> teams against other teams. So let's see what you will deliver for this group stage. Pot number two, eight big clubs and eight groups where we start uh, competition, see the competition take, play, take shape. Borussia Dortmund. So the first team of pot two is uh, Borussia Dortmund. And for Borussia Dortmund, uh, we have four possible options, uh, all blue groups uh, from E to H. Now we're preparing the uh, balls for this, uh, for this draw. Borussia were winners of the title in 1997. Appearing in the UEFA Champions League group stage uh, 12 times out of the last 13 seasons. Now we will see from the hands of Eric where Borussia Dortmund will play this season. Group F. Group F. Uh, and in Group F, Borussia Dortmund will find Paris Saint-Germain. So, the first uh, clash of titans, yes please, Joe, is ready for us. We have a second team uh, ready to come out. And that is... Arsenal. 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 After a few years of absence, Arsenal are back to the stage. We can allocate uh, Arsenal to six uh, groups. Uh, it's uh, A, B, C, D, E, and H. So everything is possible for these groups, uh, except, of course, the group where they, we have Manchester City. So they, uh, Arsenal were finalists in 2006. It was a great season for them, where they uh, created the record for the most successive uh, Champions League clean sheets. Ten in the same season, still unbeaten. Group B. B. So Arsenal is coming back in Group B and uh, they will face Sevilla FC. We can go ahead, yes please, go ahead with the third team for another group. Atletico Madrid. Club Atletico de Madrid. Oh, let's see. Madrid, Atletico de Madrid can play in two of the uh, groups, uh, Group E or Group G. The three times finalists of uh, the UEFA Champions League and uh, the European Champions Cup, of course. Last time it was in 2016. But for 11 successive years now they've been appearing in uh, Champions League. Group E. Group E for Atletico de Madrid, where they will find uh, the Dutch champions of Feyenoord. We go ahead, another one. Group 
Let's see who's coming up. Manchester United. Manchester United. We have uh, three possibilities for Manchester United, the group uh, A, group C, or group D. United uh, have appeared uh, 25 times in the UEFA Champions League group stage. It's the English record. And played 238 matches there. Only three clubs have more than uh, Manchester United. Group A. So Manchester United joins Bayern Munich in Group uh, A. We're ready. We can go ahead. We have another one. Another exciting clash ready to be shown. RB Leipzig. Leipzig. B Leipzig can be drawn into the four remaining groups, groups C, D, G or H. At the fifth successive appearance, Leipzig, best result of this club was the semi-final in 2020, what we call the special COVID edition. We played the last stages in a tournament in Portugal. Group G. In the group of Leipzig is Group G. Leipzig will find again, it's not a new uh, uh, clash. Leipzig will find again Manchester City in Group G title holders versus uh, RB Leipzig. There are still three clubs uh, which need to be drawn. And one is uh, Inter Milan. Inter Milano. So for Inter, we don't have uh, any alternative. Inter can only be allocated to Group D. So the finalists of last year, three times winners of uh, the UEFA Champions League. Inter did quite well last year in this competition with uh, five clean sheets in seven Champions League knockout matches. FC Porto. FC Porto. FC Porto is uh, also automatically allocated to a group and no options, no alternative options possible. The group is H. So Porto is joining FC Barcelona in group H at their 27th participation in the UEFA Champions League group stage. They are joint third, uh, all time third uh, together with Bayern. Real Madrid. And now, of course, uh, Real Madrid, uh, and for Real Madrid, uh, we have a uh, Group C, and in Group C, Real Madrid will find Napoli. That's all for pot number two. So another eight teams drawn some huge mouth oh, yes. clashes. Pedro and I have been looking at this, haven't we? Yeah. Munich, Manchester, Napoli, Real Madrid, Sevilla, Arsenal as well. It's looking very, very good indeed. Yeah, and we're only halfway through. So uh, <laughs> let's take a look at the teams in pot three now as they'll be discovering their Champions League fate. Eight more teams discovering who will they be playing in this season's UEFA Champions League group stage. And this pot includes the likes of Ukrainian champions Shakhtar Donetsk and 1991 winners Servena Zvezda, Red Star Belgrade. Giorgio, over to you. Yes, and the excitement is mounting as we see more now of uh, 
how the teams will play this uh, this new season. Joe, you can start with uh, one team. First of what number three? Shakhtar Donetsk. And the team is the champions of Ukraine, Shakhtar Donetsk. We can allocate Shakhtar Donetsk to any of the eight groups. We don't need to make any, put any condition. So they can be allocated anywhere at this, at this stage. Quarter finalists of uh, 2011 and uh, 13 participations in the last 14 seasons, which shows the uh, Shakhtar Donetsk is an established partner of this competition. And uh, in a few seconds, we will see in which group Shakhtar Donetsk will feature. Group H. Group H means that uh, Shakhtar Donetsk will uh, uh, take a challenge to Barcelona and uh, FC Port. Another team, please, Joe. Red Star Belgrade. So, <laughs> Serben Asvesda, I think you, you went the shortcut, uh, yeah. Joe. Yeah. But uh, we have to do the job. Serben Asvesda is the name of this glorious club from Belgrade, winners in 91, and uh, also for Red Star or Serben Asvesda, we don't have any conditions. So, seven groups are available from A to G. Winners of uh, the edition 1991, so when they lifted the trophy, and they are back after the season 1920 here. It's the first Serbian club to qualify directly to the group stage without going through qualifications in summer. Group G. Group G. So Serbian Svezda will uh, face uh, in Group G Manchester City and uh, RB Leipzig. So next one. PSV Eindhoven. PSV Eindhoven. They can be allocated to four of the remaining groups, uh, groups uh, A, B, C, D. Eindhoven, they were winners in uh, 1988. Now they uh, coming straight from the hard fought playoff with the uh, Rangers. And uh, for PSV Eindhoven, this is the group. Group B. B. And B means that uh, the other teams uh, with facing uh, Eindhoven for the time being are Sevilla and Arsenal. So fifth, another team from uh, pot number three for another group. I see Milan. Milan, so Milan, seven time winners. They have two options, Milan, Group E or Group F. Semi-finalists of uh, last season. So Group E or Group F for Milan. Let's see which one of the two. Group F. Group F, uh, and in Group F, uh, Milan uh, will find uh, Paris Saint-Germain and Borussia Dortmund. We have gone through uh, four of the teams uh, of this spot number three. We're ready to see how the other four teams uh, will uh, complete the remaining groups. Still uh, big challenges ahead of us. FC Salzburg. So from Austria, the champions of Austria, Salzburg, three groups are possible for Salzburg, A, C, and D. Salzburg made the round of 16 two seasons ago, in 2022. Now they are at their fifth consecutive participation. And interestingly, they never lost the opening game. This Group D. Group D. 
Group D is the group of Salzburg together with uh, Benfica and uh, Internazionale Milano. Three teams. Uh, let's go one less. And the one less is the following one. SS Lazio. Lazio. For Lazio, we don't have many options, only one. The option is Group E. So we have to uh, put Lazio in Group E, where they find uh, Feyenoord and uh, Atletico Madrid. Good, we can go ahead. Le let's see uh, Lazio playing in this group. Uh, the last time in Champions League they were unbeaten in Group Phase was 2021. FC Copenhagen. And now Copenhagen was a straight uh, on the playoff matches played against Rakov Chestokova. Copenhagen are the champions of Denmark and they have two options that are currently being drawn by Erika Vidal, Group A or Group C. Only Danish clubs having reached the uh, knockout stage in the past. Copenhagen and they Group go a. to A. Together with uh, Bayern and uh, with Manchester United. So only one is left, I think everybody knows. And there is one group which is uh, ready to uh, receive uh, this club. So we go now with uh, SC Braga. SC Braga from Portugal. The last group is Group uh, C. So we allocate Braga to Group C together with Napoli and Real Madrid. Thank you. 24 teams down, eight to go. And Reshman, you pointed out a couple of groups uh, after the second part. I'm going to point out a couple as well. Um, Sevilla, Arsenal, PSV Eindhoven, Benfica, Internazionale, Salzburg, and of course PSG, Borussia Dortmund, and AC Milan. Just a, a few of the fantastic pools that we're looking at uh, for now. So exciting, this stage, isn't it? it just, it's just getting hotter and hotter, all of the groups, but there are still eight more teams wanting to find out who they will be playing. So let's take a look at the clubs in the fourth and final pot. A really interesting pot, isn't it? The eight teams in pot four, they include Champions League debutants, Union Berlin and Royal Antwerp, as well as the 1967 winners mm. and Scottish champions, of course, Celtic. It is time now then to conclude the draw. Let's see who they get. Gentlemen, back to you. Yes, and for the last time, we shuffle the balls. And this draw will tell us all about uh, the UEFA Champions League 23-24 group stage. Joe, up to you. First team to complete a group. Real Sociedad. That's Real Sociedad. Spain. So Real Sociedad has four possible groups. Group A, Group D, F or G. For Real Sociedad who made the semi-final back in 1983 and appeared the last time in Champions League group stage in 2013-2014. Group D. So the group of Real Sociedad is D. First group to be completed with the Benfica, Internazionale, Salzburg and Real Sociedad. Joe? 
second group to be completed. Newcastle United. Newcastle United uh, FC. We have three possible groups for Newcastle, E, F or H. At the second group stage appearance, 21 years ago was the last time the Newcastle competed in the UEFA Champions League, season 2002-2003. See where they will go. Group F. Group F, uh, which uh, looks like a real iron group uh, Paris Saint Germain, Borussia Dortmund, uh, AC Milan, and uh, Newcastle United. So we have uh, another team for another group. Galatasaray. Now it's the turn of the Turkish champions of uh, Galatasaray. We can draw Galatasaray in any of the six remaining groups, uh, A, B, C, E, G or H. Galatasaray is the only Turkish club having won a UEFA club competition. They did it uh, with the uh, UEFA Cup and the Super Cup in 2000. Last time in group stage of Champions League, it was 1920, sorry, 2019-2020. Group A. Group A is the group of Galatasaray together with the Bayern, with Manchester United and FC Copenhagen. We can go to the uh, next one, next team. Union Berlin. FC Union Berlin. Uh, first time uh, in Champions League for Union Berlin. Two groups for uh, this uh, German, the club from the German capital, Group B or Group C. And they become the 15th German club to appear in uh, the Champions League. Germany has more than any other nations. Group C. C. Napoli, Real Madrid, Sporting Club Braga, and uh, Union Berlin. Another one, we are uh, halfway through, pod number four, so very close to the end, very close to know everything. Young boys. Young boys, they say young boys. Swiss champions, group E, group G, or group H are possible for young boys who made the semi-final back in 1959. But in the last three seasons, they have been here two times. It was a group of young boys. Group G. Group G for eBay, Manchester City, Leipzig, Zervena Zvezda, and uh, Young Boys. So, also this group is uh, now complete. Three teams to go. Lons. RC Lons. Uh, Lons. And for Lons, we don't have alternatives. Only Group B is possible for Lons, together with uh, Sevilla, Arsenal, and PSV Eindhoven. Only two teams, uh, Joe, please. Tell us which is the first one. Group E and Group H are waiting for a full lineup. Celtic. So, first is Celtic. It's indifferent, Group E or Group H, so we have to draw for the uh, Scottish champions, winners of the 1967 final in Lisbon and the only Scottish club having won this trophy. Celtic will join Group 
Group E. Group E, together with Feyenoord, with uh, Atletico Madrid, and uh, with uh, SS Lazio. So only one ball, last name, yeah. and uh, we will make sure that everything has been done correctly. And the last name is... Uh, Royal Antwerp. The name of a debutant in group stage, uh, Royal Antwerp FC, champions of Belgium. They join Group H, where they find Barcelona, FC Porto, and FC Shakhtar Donetsk. And this is all for the group stage of this season's UEFA Champions League. It is indeed. The 32 clubs have been drawn. A lot of excitement throughout. I could hear the reactions here in the room, I'm sure, on social media as well. Football fans around the world sharing the groups, <laughs> sharing already some of the anticipation for these great games. Let's take a look at the group stage, then go through them in alphabetical order. Starting with Group A, we'll have Bayern Munich, Manchester United, Copenhagen and Galatasaray. In B, it's Sevilla, Arsenal, PSV Eindhoven and Lens. In Group C, we have Napoli, Real Madrid, Sporting Club Braga and Union Berlin. And in D, it's Benfica, Internazionale Milano, Salzburg and Real Sociedad. Yeah, in Group E, it's Feyenoord, Club Atlético de Madrid, Lazio and Celtic. If you're a travelling fan, you're really going to enjoy yourself in Group F because there are some iconic arenas in that one, aren't there? Paris Saint-Germain, Borussia Dortmund, AC Milan and Newcastle United. Group G, it's Manchester City, the champions, Leipzig, Sverna Zvezda and Young Boys. And in Group H, it's Barcelona, Porto, Shakhtar Donetsk and Royal Antwerp. There you what have a it. debut for them. Yeah, that's the lineup. <laughs> of course, we'd love to thank our special guests, Eric Abidal and Joe Cole, for your skillful handling of proceedings, <laughs> and of course, Giorgio Marchetti and Tobias Hedgestuck as well. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Rashman, of course, the draw may be done, but this award ceremony is far from over because now we're going to turn our attention to honoring some of the biggest stars in European football, past and present. Yeah, absolutely. First up, though, it's the President's Award, and this goes to a former player or manager whose outstanding achievements, both on and off the field, have contributed to the success and development of the beautiful game. And joining us for this evening to present the award is the UEFA President himself, Alexander Chaperin. Great to see you. This is always a very special occasion in this ceremony. As Reshmin mentioned, this award is about so much more than the goals you score or the trophies you win, right? It's about the power football has to inspire people around the world. And you know a lot about this because you've traveled around the world. Uh, participating in social responsibility projects, many of them around the UEFA Foundation for Children. So how important is it for football to set a good example, President? I mean, football is so powerful that uh, uh, everybody follows football. Whatever happens in football, good or bad, is big. And uh, UEFA Foundation for Children did, did a lot of fantastic projects all around the world. We're proud of it. So uh, this award is uh, not just football award. Yeah. You have to be more than just a top football player. Yeah, yeah and that's actually on that note. UEFA announced earlier in this, uh, this week that the winner of the President's Award this year is the German footballing legend, Miroslav Klose, for so many reasons, like you say, on and off the field. <coughs> Why specifically did you go for him? I mean, we all know that Miroslav was uh, a fantastic player, one of the best scorers of all times in any competition. But uh, many don't know that he's a role model of fair play. He, I don't see many young players now that uh, they say to the referee when they award them the penalty, it's not a penalty. I don't see many players scoring with their hands. Okay, we have VAR, but, uh, <laughs> but they didn't then. <laughs> saying it was not uh, like that. So I admire Miroslav, and that's why he is the one. All right, well, he'll be joining us on stage in just a moment. Let's first take a quick look back at his career for club and country.
such an icon, such an incredible career as well. Absolutely deserving of the applause. Please welcome to the stage, you can give him another round of applause, the winner of the 2023 UEFA President's Award, Miroslav Klose. <laughs> there we go. We got the lineup. Uh, Miroslav, great to have you here. Congratulations, first of all. And this award, we know we, you scored so many goals throughout your career, but like the president was saying, it was about two moments specifically that really set an amazing example for fair play. One when you were playing with Lazio against Napoli, a cross comes in, the ball hits your hand, goes in the net. This is before VAR, of course. Goal is awarded, but you said shouldn't count. What was going on in your mind throughout that process? Es war eigentlich ganz einfach, weil ich glaube, es war ein Eckball und zwei Spieler sind vor mir hochgesprungen und ich wollte den nicht ins Gesicht kriegen und habe mich nur geschützt und äh, dann bekomme ich ihn an die Hand und äh, im ersten Moment äh, wusste ich nicht, wie es passiert ist, nur meine ganzen äh, Teamkameraden kamen zu mir und wollten das Tor bejubeln, äh, aber dann kam auch Napoli-Spieler und hat gesagt, äh, du, irgendwas war, war da falsch. Und dann habe ich es wahrgenommen, dass ich es mit der Hand gespielt habe und äh, bis ich zu dem Schiedsrichter mhm. durchgedrungen bin, äh, war es lange, aber dann habe ich gesagt, ich habe ihn mit der Hand gespielt und äh, deswegen war es für mich äh, nur ein Beispiel. What did your teammates and fans actually say to you after the game, Miroslav, when you actually took that decision to tell the referee that, look, this goal is not going to count? What was the reaction, the post-match reaction? Ja, die, es war nicht einfach. Die, die Spieler äh, haben natürlich gesagt, es war 0-0 damals. Äh, es wäre gut, wenn wir 1-0 in Führung gehen und äh, wir brauchen die Punkte etc. Aber für mich ist es unheimlich wichtig, mit einem guten Beispiel voranzugehen. Und ich weiß, wie viele junge Spieler, junge Fußballer, äh, junge und Mädchen uns nacheifern. Und äh, für mich ist das wichtiger wie Wörter, wenn man Taten sprechen lassen kann, weil das bleibt mehr hängen. Amazing. And there was another case of fair play with a penalty where you were involved, uh, uh, an incident where you turned it down, and I think we can see that now here on stage as well. How important is it, Miroslav, that footballers are an example when it comes to setting the standards of fair play? Because you're watched and followed by so many people around the world. Yeah, yeah man, das war eine Aktion uh, mit Bremen, und um, das war noch, ich glaube, 2005. Und das war für mich äh, ja das erste Beispiel, aber das ist das, was ich halt innen spüre. Und äh, deswegen bin ich so, so glücklich und zufrieden und ruhe in mir selbst, ähm, weil ich weiß, dass, äh, dass viele junge Kinder äh, vom Fernseher sitzen und äh, mit solchen Beispielen. Mhm. Und überall, wo ich auf der Welt rumreise, kriege ich dieses Feedback. Und sie erinnern sich an diese Fairplay-Sachen und das ist mir viel, viel wichtiger, Entschuldigung, wie solche Trophäen. <lacht> <laughs> Amazing to say that. It's great to be so honest, Miroslav. And look, you had such a stellar career, top goal scorer in the World Cup finals. That record is still holding to this day. All time goal scorer for the German men's national team as well. And of course, you won the World Cup. It just proves that honesty and yeah. integrity can lead to that level of success. So, congratulations on your award Thank today. You very much. Thank you very much, Miroslav. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the UEFA President's Award winner 2023, Miroslav Kloza. It's a refreshing vibe, isn't it? Really yep. nice to hear. Uh, congratulations once again, Miroslav. Now, the president will stay with us uh, for the next awards, all of which were voted by a jury composed of national and club coaches whose teams participated in UEFA competitions, and that's together with a group of journalists selected by the European sports media. Indeed, what a wonderful collection of nominees as well. We can see some of their pictures here on stage. And in a moment, we'll be revealing the winner for our Men's and Women's Player of the Year. But first up, it's the Coaches Awards. President, if you could please reveal who the winner is of the UEFA Men's Coach of the Year. UEFA Men's Coach of the Year is Pep Guardiola.
quite a special year for Pep Guardiola. Congratulations to him, the 2022-23 UEFA Men's Coach of the Year. Now, unfortunately, Pep couldn't be with us today. He's still recuperating from his recent surgery. Pep, we'll see you soon. We wish you all the best and a speedy recovery as well. Indeed. Now, our next award is for the UEFA Women's Coach of the Year. President, if you could please reveal the name of the winner of this award. The winner of the UEFA Women's Coach of the Year is Sarina Wigman. You know, there was so much applause in this arena that um, she almost joined us early. But you know what? We'll give her the applause she deserves at the right time. Please welcome our UEFA Women's Coach of the Year, Serena Wigman. Thank you. Come and join us. This is it's heavy. Be careful. Thanks. Thank you very much. Serena, congratulations. Uh, you could feel a lot of love for you in this room, a lot of excitement for you winning this award. Now, we know you came up just short of the World Cup, but you did go into that tournament as European champion. Amazing run of results over the last two years, <coughs> two major international finals in as many years. Tell us about this incredible run and how proud you are of this team. Yeah, of course, I'm very proud of the team and the staff. Um, and I think um, yeah, it's very special what we've done. It's all about quality, players' quality, staff quality, and the FA who really supports us and gives us all the facilities to perform. And then it comes to connections and growth and clarity, I think. Mm. It was fantastic seeing England progress in the World Cup. We saw you having to tinker with your team and the system and enforced it, you know, <clears throat> substitutions because of injuries and things like that. It was, a, it was just brilliant to see how the team grew in the competition. But you also made history this year with England winning the finalissima. But your record as England manager is quite incredible. I've got here 39 matches, 30 wins, yeah. just two losses. What do you put that down to? What's sort of the special sort of formula yeah. that makes this all tick? Well, I'm, I'm not really into the st statistics. I'm just trying to become better every day with the team. And what's, what I just said is quality of the team and being connected and have a great staff and facilities. And we're just trying to, to become better every day. And of course, there's a lot of work in that and how we want to play and how we want to train, how we tr want to treat each other and have an environment where everyone really can grow uh, and, and then give clarity about roles and responsibilities. And that really works so far. I did want to pick up on what you said now and, and the, the personal element of the inspiration that you've been to a lot of women around the world in your career. You played when you were small, you were a PE teacher, then you make it to a coach and then two-time European champion. When you look back, do you realize the impact that you've had in women's football and what does that mean to you as well looking at this journey? Yeah, it means so much to me. I, I, you know, the World Cup now, was every record was broken and I am I'm the lucky one who played the World Cup in 88 as a player. That was unofficial at that time. And I thought, well, that would be really great if we can, you know, if we could do that more. But as a player, I never did. And now, I'm, of course, I was at the World Cup with, with England. And the growth of the game, the things that have changed from then till now is just incredible. And I just really enjoy being part of it and have a little contribution. It's a huge contribution, Serena, and it is the reason why you're here. You're the UEFA Women's Coach of the Year. Massive congratulations to you. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us here uh, in Monaco this evening. Can I, can I have a message, please? Of course you can. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, thanks, everyone, for voting, especially, uh, of course, colleagues. It's really special, and I'm very honoured. Um, also, thanks to everyone who's involved with the Lionesses, of course, the team, the incredible team, players and staff, and the support from the FA. But it also feels a little different. Um, we all know um, the issues around the Spanish team, and it really hurts me as a um, coach, as a mother of two daughters, as a wife and as a human being. And it shows, we just talked about ATA, the, the game has grown so much, but there's also still a long way to go in women's football and in society. And I would like to dedicate this award to the Spanish team, 
the team that played on the World Cup such great football that everyone enjoyed. I was going to ask you to give this applause afterwards, but um, this team deserves to be celebrated and deserves to be listened to. And I'm going to give them again a big applause, and I hope you will join me. Thank you, Thank you. A wonderful message. Thank you very much, Serena. Important message as well. Thank you for joining us. Congratulations. You are allowed to take Thank your you so much. Again. Thank you. Well deserved award. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are on to our last two awards. First up, it's a UEFA Women's Player of the Year. Here are the top three nominees. Three incredible world-class talents with the sort of footballing ability us mere mortals, like myself and Pedro, can yep. only dream of. Uh, this is a pretty big trophy. It's pretty heavy as well. So, President, if you could reveal the winner <laughs> of the UEFA <laughs> Women's Player of the Year. As fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> the Women's Player of the Year is Aitana Bonmati. Now we change, huh? I think we change. I think I give it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations Thank you. again. Congratulations to Aitana. And we'll... Here or? Yeah, it's fine here. It's fine here. here. Please. Please. Please, Aitana. Right, there we go. Join us here. Okay. We will be talking to you in just a moment. But before we do, it's time to... Uh, Real three more sublime footballers with quite literally the world at their feet. Let's look, take a look at the nominees for the Men's Player of the Year Award. Those are the top three nominees. President, if you could please reveal the name of the winner of the UEFA Men's Player of the Year Award. Men's Player of the Year is Erling Haaland. Hello, congratulations. Congratulations, Aitana and Erling. Thank you, President. Amazing accomplishments by both of you. I wanted to start with a, a question to, to Aitana, um, and I'll do it in, in Spanish. Enhorabuena, primero. Gracias, thank you. Una temporada increíble para ti, personalmente, pero como equipo también, tanto club como país. ¿Cómo, cómo te sientes ahora con este, con este trofeo? 
Buenas tardes a todos, a todos. Eh, nada, en primer lugar me gustaría felicitar a todas las nominadas y decir que para mí es un orgullo y un privilegio estar aquí en el día de hoy, después de, de los éxitos que venimos celebrando esta, esta última temporada. Es una temporada que nunca olvidaré y me gustaría compartir este premio con, con todas mis compañeras porque sin ellas eh, no estaría aquí a día de hoy. Eh, tengo la suerte de jugar con gente maravillosa, con gente espectacular que me hace mejor cada día, así como, como también eh, el club y, y todo el staff eh, con el que juego. ¿no? Eh, soy una privilegiada. Muchas mm. gracias. Y como dijiste, en los últimos como 12, años, 12 meses era increíble para ti el Mundial, es historia, por el equipo eh, nacional eh, de España. Eh, ganaste, no sé cómo se dice en español, Golden Ball. Sí. también sí, de pelota balón de oro, de oro. Sí, de también uh, el champions también sí. y uh, jugador de la temporada en la champions y la liga también en España como y tú tienes esos trofeos como con tu equipo y individual también cómo lo haces cómo tú mantienes tu nivel en dos maneras bien siempre me gusta decir que soy una persona y jugador a la vez eh, muy ambiciosa, muy inconformista, siempre quiero más y creo que esto es eh, algo que me define muy bien y que me ha, llegado, que me ha hecho llegar hasta aquí. ¿no? También tengo la suerte, como he dicho antes, de jugar en un club espectacular que me da oportunidades, eh, que me da también la oportunidad de jugar con las mejores jugadoras del mundo y que me hace ser cada día mejor. Por lo tanto, eh, soy una privilegiada. Por último, también eh, agradecer mucho las palabras de, de Sarina. Creo que es un gran detalle por su parte porque no están siendo unos momentos muy, muy buenos ahora en el fútbol español. Venimos de, de ganar el Mundial, pero mm, no se está hablando mucho de, de ello porque han pasado cosas eh, que no me gustaría dejar pasar. Y me gustaría recordar un poco lo que, lo que ha pasado. Eh, creo que como sociedad no debemos permitir... Eh, que, en, que, se haya, que se haga abuso de poder en una relación laboral, así como también faltas de respeto. Así que me gustaría que desde mi compañera Jenny, a todas las mujeres que sufren lo mismo, estamos con vosotras. Y nada, espero que sigamos trabajando para que esta sociedad mejore. Caroline, we're coming over to you. Congratulations, first of all. Second individual award in a week. And your first season at Manchester City, I mean, it's difficult to have wanted more, right? Four trophies. You're so young and you've won so much already. How are you feeling right now? How is it all seeming to you? Yeah, of course, uh, I feel good. Uh, <laughs> what more can I say? Uh, I won the treble uh, as 22 years old and uh, Yeah, I'm kind of living the dream. Uh, this was my dream when I was young. So uh, to be able to do this uh, together with my teammates uh, is something special, of course. So uh, I'm really happy. Uh, and uh, it also gives me, gives me so much motivation to keep on working, to, uh, to achieve uh, more of the the trophy that just stood there uh, and of course these these are also really nice so uh, <laughs> so uh, so yeah it's uh, it's free motivation and uh, I'm so happy <laughs> and the fact that you're so motivated is quite scary for opposition defenses and all of last season every single game we covered at Manchester City the question was how do you stop Erling Haaland I mean 52 goals is incredible um, how do you stop Erling Haaland you're going to tell us that no of course you're not Hey, you shouldn't ask me this. You shouldn't I don't ask you else. that. Okay, so I'm not going to ask you that. I knew you wouldn't go tell me anyway. So the question is, how do you keep that level up next season? Because you're going to want the same. You're going to want more. Can you do it? I'll do my best, of course. Uh, but I mean, uh, as I said, it's, it's motivation. It's about keeping the, the head clear. And, uh, and uh, I think even more eyes will be on uh, me and the team now after winning the Champions League and everything. So uh, we have to be more uh, prepared. We have to be more sharper and, and everything. So uh, for me, it's, it's motivation uh, and uh, I'm ready to try. I'm ready to do my best to, uh, to, uh, to have a new great season. 
you know, you're surrounded by strong footballing figures, strong influences in the dressing room as well. I mean, we saw after, I think, the first game of the season, Pep, I mean, he's not here today to defend himself, but he was, you know, going on at you. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Your dad's here as well. We see him all, you know, everywhere. Who are you more scared of, your dad or Pep? <laughs> Good question. Sometimes <laughs> Pep, uh, Pep is a bit scary, I have to say. Uh, but again, my father also can be a bit scary. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, this is something I like. I like when Pep shouts at me uh, because he tries to, to get something in my brain that he don't think I have. Uh, so uh, so uh, I like it. So uh, I'm not complaining at all. He just wants to make me a better footballer. So, uh, so uh, I'm not complaining at all. And uh, my father and me, we argue a lot. We, we have uh, a lot of good moments together. So I'm not complaining there either. It's all in the, in the right direction, isn't it? <laughs> Very honest answer Very as honest. well. <laughs> Love that. Aitana, una rápida finalmente para ti. ¿Es posible ganar la Champions otra vez? Hombre, claro. Y lucharemos para, para ello. Muy bien. Vamos. Congratulations. <laughs> Fantastic to have so much talent here on stage with us Absolutely. tonight. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Huge congratulations to you both. Um, you've had so much success last season. I wish you all the best yep. in the campaign going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, the UEFA Women's and Men's Players of the Year, Aitana Bonmati and Erling Haaland. Well deserved. <laughs> yeah, don't move just yet, guys, minute. because we are at the end of tonight's show. We want to keep you here because everyone wants to see you up here with your wonderful trophies. It's been such a lovely night. A big thank you goes to the UEFA president, Alexander Cheferin, and to, to everyone's here, all our special guests this evening. Definitely. The UEFA Champions League group stage kicks off on the 19th of September already. So not long to wait now. And of course, we wish all of the clubs participating in this season's competition the very best of luck. Yeah, absolutely. From Pedro and myself and everyone on stage to everyone here in Monaco and everyone watching all over the world as well. Thank you so much for joining us and good night. Good night. Thank you.